The Dragon is Command of the Flame, developed by Crazy Go Games, steps onto the stage as a hybrid of genres, attempting to fuse turn-based strategy, world exploration, and empire building into a single epic adventure. It beckons players into a world where dragons reign supreme and warlords clash for dominion. However, beneath this intriguing premise lies both. However, beneath this intriguing premise lies both moments of brilliance and areas of missed potential. In this game, you assume the role of a commander, an enigmatic hero who commands a troop of monstrous creatures. The story unfurls as you embark on a journey to meet the Queen of Niwenworn, a dragon monarch, only to meet your untimely end at the claws of the mysterious dragon. But that is not the end of this fantastical realm, as you are resurrected by the Dragon Queen, stripped of your powers and corporal form. Thus begins the central objective of the game, to resurrect Niwenborn from ruins of its former glory, and in doing so, restore peace to the world. While the narrative says the stage ripe with potential, it struggles to live up to this promise. The characters, though decent voice acted, remain mostly forgettable, and the lore that could have enriched the magical realm feels underdeveloped. Amidst this narrative landscape, Nati, the lovable battle pangolin, emerges as a notable character, adding a touch of love and humor to the adventure, especially since the main character adopts the role of, of a silent protagonist. Visually, the dragoness exhibits a curious duality. Character art during the conversation shines with excellent quality, showcasing meticulous detail and captivating design. However, the 3D models employed in the game diverge from the contemporary standards, evoking a sense of nostalgia from the late 200s gaming. Environments fare better, offering dense, intricately designed locales that beckon exploration. As for the game's audio, it does its job without leaving a profound impact. Voice acting generally impresses, while other auditory elements stick to the conventions of generic fantasy soundscapes. Yet, it is not just aesthetics that shape the player's experience. The user's interface plays a pivotal role. The Dragon is divides its focus among three key components, exploration, combat, and base building. Exploration takes center stage, employing a turn-based format that harkens back to Heroes of Might or Magic. Each in-game day grants a specific number of tiles for movement, where players can cover upgrades, side quests, confront enemies, and more. This turn-based system allows for strategic planning, while enemies maintain their positions, permitting the player to anticipate the encounter. The game rewards exploration with optional paths, value resources, upgrades, and potential recruits. However, a role-like element emerges, resetting the commander's skill after each successful mission, introducing random skills, and enabling the rebuilding of the monster party. Though the variety starts modesty, it expands as the game progresses, lending a sense of adaptability to the gameplay. Combat, conversely, threats into murkier waters, tends to feel ponderous, lacking substantial depth in planning and strategy. Units possess both close and long range attacks, and the sprawling grid based battlegrounds often outpace the movement capabilities of units. Base building, a fundamental aspect of the game centered around Niwenborn, underwhelms in comparison. Construction and enhancements in the city rely on material gathering during missions, but the cost can escalate significantly. The grind required for the city upgrades might deter some players leaving them yearning for more engaging experience. The game deviates from the initial expectations. Rather than fostering a steady team of all-powerful monsters, the game encounters experimental with army compositions due to its roguelike elements. This divergence from the traditional leveling system introduces a sense of unpredictability to each mission. However, the gameplay ultimately falls into a repetitive pattern. In conclusion, the game embarks on an ambitious journey, but is restrained by its mundane combat and simplistic city-building mechanics. The exploration components bring enjoyment for a few hours, but a lackluster of narrative and, inc and increased grinding in the later stages more for an overall experience. At the end of the day, there are way better games out there, which is the reason I cannot recommend this game, as there are many better games out there. Thank you for watching and have a great day.